Despite Juke's example, the world is changing big time and is changing really fast. The business consultant Tom Peters said we live in technicolor times. We are in the midst of a perfect storm of technology, politics, demographics, and global economics, all converging in some very, very powerful ways that are throwing things up in question the way they haven't been before. So as we started trying to figure out the answers to those questions, we began by reading this book, A Whole New Mind. For those of you who haven't read it, I'm going to give you the ultimate Cliff Notes version. Pink's basic idea is that we are moving, as you can sort of see from the pictures up there, that we are moving from the agrarian age, and then we went into the industrial age, then the information age, and you can just barely see that little paint palette up there, and that now we are entering the conceptual age. And that each one of these ages requires a very different mindset and a very different set of skills. Now here's the basic premise behind it, that we have a left brain and a right brain. Okay, most of you are probably familiar with that. Okay? Our left side, okay, the cubicles, the right side, the more artsy side. More particularly, the left side, things like linear processing, logic, rational thought, verbal, symbolic, reality-based. All those things which for so long we have seen as the single measure of intelligence. But on the right side, we have those other things, holistic processing, fantasy, nonverbal things, intuition. And Pink's premise is that for the conceptual age, for this world that we're entering into now so rapidly, what we need is not a right brain. We don't need just a left brain. We need all of them to be working in concert with each other. That we need to be able to tap into both sides of our brain for that. The, the cover of the book is really mislabeled. It says why right brainers will rule the future. And that's not what Pink is saying in there at all. It's this idea that you have to bring all of these things together. And for Pink, they manifest themselves in what he calls the six senses. Okay, the six basic qualities that will be the intelligences that people need. I'm not going to go into each of them. You can consider this a little teaser, and maybe this will get you to go and read the book. If you haven't, I really, really encourage you to do so. It's an, it's an excellent book, and it's very easy to read. And what's also really cool about it is it gives you all of these little exercises that you can do to enhance your own prowess in these areas. Now, we're going to go back to our history lesson for a second. Here's your second quiz. And see if you can name the nation. Richest in the world, and all of these other things. Got it? Okay, for those of you who know Dick Hall, Coach Hall, this is what he calls the good old days. <laughs> what this tells you is that things can change on a global level pretty quickly. That wasn't very long ago. Okay? And a large part of why they were able to do this was because of how they tapped into what was happening in the Industrial Revolution at the time. Let's narrow this down even a little bit more. These are pictures of last year's pre-K students. So in 14, 15 years, they're going to be Green Hill alumni, fresh Green Hill alumni. Think, okay, well, that's not that long ago. The world may not be that different. Let's go back 15 years. 1993. Bill Clinton was just elected to his first term in office. Czechoslovakia was still a single nation, although it was on the verge of dissolving. The European Common Market was just being formed. Down near Waco was this little thing called the Branch Davidian standoff. And it was the first World Trade Center bombing. Technology in 1993. Here's what your cell phone looked like. <laughs> 
The World Wide Web was founded in 1993. 1994, Yahoo started, and you had the first widespread internet browser. And in 1994, there was a conference out in California among a group of people who said, you know, this World Wide Web thing, there might be some commercial possibilities here. <laughs> so clearly, technology is a driving force and is going to continue to be much, much more of a force. And we don't necessarily know where, but we can take some lessons from a guy named Ray Kurzweil, who does a lot of his studies based on something called the law of accelerating returns. Here are some of his predictions. I'll start you off with one that you're really going to like. Kurzweil says that pretty soon you'll be able to swallow a pill that will allow you to eat whatever you want and not gain any weight. <laughs> Kurzweil also says that life expectancy each year will grow faster than the aging process. Now here's where it starts to get a little freaky. Kurzweil predicts that by the early 2020s, we will be implanting computers in our brains. And we will building, be building machines as smart as ourselves. Sounds a little far-fetched, but he says by 2029, a machine will pass the Turing test. The Turing test is when a person converses with a computer and doesn't know that it's a computer or a human being. Now you say, hmm, I don't know about that. Last month at the Artificial Intelligence Contest in Suffolk, England, three of the 12 judges were fooled by two of the entries because of the computer's advanced sense of humor. Now Kurzweil says that in the next 50 years, you should, you should expect more scientific innovation than we've seen in the last 400 years. It's very easy to be skeptical about this stuff. This summer I saw somebody wearing a t-shirt and it said, if this is the future, where's my jetpack? <laughs> Kurzweil has some credibility. Back in 1981, he predicted the internet. He predicted we would have it in the 1990s. He also said that by 1998, there would be a computer chess champion. He was wrong. It actually happened in 97. Despite all of this, one thing about our relationship with these machines remains true. And the reason that's true is because we're not just machines. We're not just cyborgs. We're not just metallic. And that is why we have to be focusing as much, if not more, on the mind as on the brain. On the things that the mind can do that can't be replaced by a machine. 